We have had election fraud. There's a lot at stake. Control of the American government, control of the economy, control of the military. When there's a lot at stake, there's an incentive to fraud. The difference between our history of fraud and computerized fraud is that with computerized fraud, you can set up a program that basically gives you the number of votes you need, switches, deletes, adds, without leaving a trace. Computer professionals pretty much agree that the system is tremendously vulnerable. I'm Alex Halderman. I'm a graduate student at Princeton University. I'm Ari Feldman, and I'm also a graduate student at Princeton University. My interests are computer security and technology <laughs> policy. This machine has two locks, one that covers both the power switch and the memory card slot. And the memory card slot is really all that's needed to um, introduce malicious software on the machine. All someone would need is uh, access to one of these machines for one minute. Alex over here, who has modest locksmithing skills, is able to pick it in under 10 seconds. All right, so that was very hard. This machine has already been infected with our vote-stealing uh, software, and uh, there won't be any signs in, that, in the pre-election testing that the machine is infected. Now we're ready to run our election. This is uh, the race for President of the United States. The candidates are George Washington and Benedict Arnold. They walked me through the election. And so we can cast a vote for George Washington, and then press next. I'm going to cast my vote for George Washington as well. And again, George Washington, father of our country. Uh, I, I think I favor him over most notorious traitor. And, all right, so... Um, so now we have three votes for George Washington? That's right. The total so far is three votes for George Washington, no votes for Benedict Arnold. Now election day is over. We're going to end the election and print out the totals. And we see the total. One vote for George Washington, two votes for Benedict Arnold. How did this happen? Our demonstration vote-stealing software running inside the machine switched two of the votes from George Washington to Benedict Arnold. It switched all of the records, so there's no way to go back now and find out that the actual result was three votes for George. The Diebold AccuVote TS voting machine that the Princeton team hacked is an earlier version of the machines currently in use in Allentown. Hi, I'm Levi Price. I'm the chief of staff at Lehigh County. And you were the one who purchased the new Diebold voting machines. I was involved in the purchasing. When we looked at those, we looked at the possibility of tampering. We changed the passwords for each election. The password didn't stop us for more than a few seconds. One, you have to have the technological capability of altering the software. The memory card is just a standard off-the-shelf memory card that you use in your digital camera. The smart cards you can buy over the internet. We have 700 separate machines. Each of those 700 separate machines is locked with a different key. You don't need to break all 700 locks. Because a viral attack is possible, all you need to do is infect one or a small number of machines. And then the virus and your malicious vote-stealing software will spread from machine to machine during normal election procedures. But what if we had a paper trail for the touchscreen machines? Would that make them more reliable? There is no reason to trust a, a touchscreen or DRE system with or without a paper trail, period. You can hack the paper trails as easily as you can the internal numbers. Matt Bishop is one of the foremost experts in the world on computer security. Many of the vulnerabilities can be exploited in a very straightforward manner. <laughs> Meaning it's not too hard. Meaning it's not hard at all. <laughs> Are the elections being rigged? Yes, our evidence shows that they are. Evidence like the 2004 presidential recount results in Ohio. Jesse Tendler was a regional coordinator for that recount. I was in charge of about 10 different counties. Not only was there a discrepancy between the hand recount and the original certified vote, in most cases there was also a discrepancy between the hand recount and the machine recount um, in every precinct in every county. That's a little confusing, so let's look at it carefully. In almost every precinct he was involved in, there was a difference between the hand count and the machine count. Here are some of the differences. In Bradford Village, the official certified machine count 
had three votes more than the hand count. In Piqua 2A, the machine count had eight votes more. Troy 3E, 14 votes more. The machine seems to be adding a small number of votes each time, but could those small changes really have mattered? The differences are absolutely meaningful differences. Difference of six votes per precinct could change the results of the entire election.